Here's a few items I'm making for Simple Jack, Happy Jack. Some Red Bug. Uh, that's actually a new worm that we're going to feature in today's video. <clears throat> but that's, um, that's the Angling AI, uh, oh gosh, what's it called? The Mid Mag, I think. It's a, it's a fat, fat trick worm. Well, it's not really a trick worm. It's a fat round finesse worm, um, I guess you could call it. Then some kicker tails and tilapia. It's a really pretty color. And some more red bug kicker tails. So yeah, I'm not, not actually gonna film this video today, but I wanted to come out here and, uh, and show you guys um, just a few things I've been doing. Um, so, I have now in my possession an actual injection tube mold. Um, that's an AI mold, which is going to do some really cool things for us. And then that hand pour swim bait that we've been messing with, you can see I got my other mold back, and now I have my hook slot inserts. Um, so, that will definitely be a good thing for making more of those hand pours. Um, oh, and let me show you the other new addition to the family. Yep, this is the other side of my dirty garage. This is a 112 pound thrust Minn Kota Fortrex for the uh, bass boat. Got my dead on plastic over there. But yeah, this right here is money. I've been needing a, uh, a beefy trolling motor for a while. And uh, now I got one, baby. But yeah, so anyway, I'm not actually gonna film this video today. Um, I'm kind of still in some nice clothes. And uh, tonight is Simple Jack's wife, Thelma, as we call her. Tonight is her, today is her birthday. Um, so today is Friday, January, what's today? Second or third, today's January 3rd. So this is Thelma's birthday. Uh, so I'm going to hang out with them tonight. I'm already exhausted as can be, but tomorrow, Saturday the 4th, is when I'm actually filming this video that you're watching. Okay, it is the next morning. Uh, I'm officially sick. Got a nice little cold and sore throat. My wife last week had the flu. Landon's had some ear infections. But we're going to film some video anyway, so... Just went outside and uh, get some fresh air. Now we're gonna head back into the uh, garage here and show you a really cool mold. Okay, so welcome back to the fish cave, everybody. I have my work area nice and clean. Uh, that always helps uh, at least me get the creative juices flowing uh, when I'm not worried about clutter. Call it AD, AD whatever it is. Um, Okay, so today we have a really cool item to show you. So Josh over at Angling AI, in his infinite wisdom, has decided to make <clears throat> a mold that makes two different worms. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can see I've written fat finesse on it for, hey, hey, you can see me in the uh, reflection, hello. So anyway, fat finesse worm, okay, this is a six and a quarter inch finesse worm but it's really thick. It's, it's a thicker finesse worm. So what's cool about this mold is that you can buy it just like this as a round worm. Both sides, you can see, have a round uh, shape to it, okay? This mold, as a whole mold, is $120. However, he also mills a flat worm bottom for it for sixty dollars so i can take basically i i can buy i can spend um 180 dollars essentially pretty sure my math's correct there yeah 60 and 120 is 180 and get two different worms out of the same sort of mold setup okay so i have a flat bottom fat finesse all i have to do is plug it in and i'm ready to go I have exactly what I want there, okay? Or I can do the round. So you can uh, essentially make two different worms with the same mold. And I think what's cool about that is that it saves you a little bit of money. Let's say you want a round finesse worm 
and then a regular flat bottom finesse worm. Now you don't have to spend um, $240 or just however much from whoever, whatever mold manufacturer you like. Now you don't have to buy two entire molds. You can essentially buy one and a half. Okay, so I'm thinking we're gonna do a uh, sort of a, a, a crawfish blue sort of laminate. So one side is going to be yellow and orange, kind of mixed together to sort of give a light orange with some black flake. And the other side is going to be a green pumpkin with blue. Um, I've made that color before, but golly, it's been a long time. Okay, so you can see that I've got some bubbles in the plastic. It's been raining, it's humid in my garage, and I stirred it a lot. Quick little trick. If you own a heat gun like I do, and you don't have a uh, vacuum chamber, or if you don't want to put it in the vacuum chamber, you can pretty much just blast the bubbles out to a pretty good degree. I mean, it'll get most of them out with a heat gun. A heat gun just simply just burns them away. Okay, it's not as good as the vacuum chamber, but it'll get you by. So now you can see there's a lot less bubbles going on after 25 seconds of heat gun. Just a little uh, tip. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of dead on orange. Come on, come on, come on, there we go. Dead on orange, add a little bit of that few drops stuff's pretty thick then a little bit of dead on yellow well that's a mess right there Ew. that'll just kind of cut that orange a little bit lighten it up slightly I love how that's like straight up old-school school bus yellow okay and it looks like I'm gonna need some more of it because that is very orange <laughs> Yeah, that's way too orange. In fact, I might have to do this again because that's not looking anything like I want it. All right, let's see if some white helps. Should help a little bit. Yeah, definitely a little bit there. Question is, is it too thick now? No, you can barely even see it. Okay, this first color is a fail. All right, I gotta do this over again. I'll meet you right back. Okay, while I'm reheating some new plastic for the orange, let's build the other side. Lure Works Green Pumpkin 109. This is the OG of green pumpkin colorants. It is great stuff. Great, great, great stuff. This and the uh, dark watermelon from MF is all I use for pumpkin stuff. Any, anything pumpkin color. See, it's just lovely. Good shade of green and brown. Okay. I might need a little bit more. However, we're gonna go ahead and add our flake. So again, this, is, this side is gonna be pumpkin blue. So a little bit of the medium black that we're going to put also that we're also going to put on the orange side, and then 0 .035 blue, the medium blue. Going to do that as well. Okay. This side is relatively simple. The only thing you kind of have to ask yourself is how thick. Do you want the colorant, you know? Yeah. That's very, very, very pretty so far. Yeah, I'm liking that. I might go a little bit more flake, though. Both colors, a little bit more blue, and then a little bit more black. And, uh, and then I think we're done with the green pumpkin side, so. That is one half of our equation. Sorry that I flubbed the orange side so bad. I haven't made this one in a while, and um, it's a real creamy orange. It's not super bright orange, so I'm going to have to uh, rethink my steps on that one. 
Okay, let's try this orange again. This time we're going to do very few drops. Four drops of orange. We're going to cut it with, let's see. There's like five drops of yellow, then some white. And just see where we're at. Very, very small quantities. Yeah. Oh, that's much closer. Yes, sir. That is much closer to what I wanted. Yeah, I haven't made this in a long time, but that is looking about right, and it's not too thick. So if I add that black flake, it should be translucent enough and not too opaque. Yeah, see that? Now we can really see that flake, and that's what you want. You, Whenever you're doing a laminate, you kind of want the the uh, translucence, the transparency or whatever you say, or opaqueness about the same. You, you want to try to get both colors even uh, when it comes to that spectrum. Okay. All right, so I think we're good there. And uh, yeah, that's all we're going to do with those three colors there. We're going to set them aside and ugh, wipe our uh, hands off here. All right, now let's get the other side out, and uh, I think we're ready to shoot our first round of worms here. Okay, here we go. Both sides are about even temperature. They're very low, about 315, 310. And right now the worm is the round worm, so it doesn't really matter which side I put on the blending block. Um, it's a round worm. Now later, whenever we do um, the, the, the flat bottom worm, <clears throat> we'll want the round side to be our top color, which is our pumpkin color, and then the, then the flat bottom side to be the um, orange. So we'll kind of have to be aware of what side we need to put each color on. Um, and that's also something that when doing laminates you always want to keep um, in mind is the layout of your mold and what side goes on which side. So kind of laminating 101 right there. We'll take a uh, quick look here inside our blending block. I always think it's cool to see how these work and just like how simple the idea is, but somehow it works. So that right there kind of gives you a, uh, a good idea of, of how your baits are gonna look. So go ahead and close this up and then we'll uh, take our first worms out, give them a drum roll and see how they did. Okay, new mold, drum roll please. Okay, let's see how we did, guys. Mm. Yeah. Check that out. Beautiful laminate. And as you can see, um, it's, it's sort of a pumpkin crawfish color. If I can get a few of them to kind of, yeah. Look at that, you guys. It's a pretty color. Let's uh, get them off here. Yeah, you can see the sprue, the uh, runner, rather, laminated very well. Yeah. What do you guys think? That color is a winner. And you could probably actually go a little bit more orange. So miss, mix a little less white in and uh, and, and, and get a great color. That's. It looked a little better in the cup. That's actually a little bit more washed out than I wanted it to be. You could go a little more orange. Or you could do whatever you want. That's why making your own baits rocks is because you don't have to listen to idiots like me. You can make whatever you want. Okay, and here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Now, we're gonna make it a regular flat bottom finesse worm. So, we're just gonna line up our, uh, our runner here Okay, so the flat bottom is on that side. 
So as I put the mold together, it's on the top side. However, <clears throat> I like, I always like the port facing me on my table. Let me uh, zoom out here. So now I know that the flat side, okay, is our right side as the mold is facing me. <clears throat> That's just the way that I like to do it. Now you can always um, get out a Sharpie marker and just, you know, uh, top bottom, or excuse me, top bottom. Okay, so our bottom side is the flat side. Okay, so basically I want my pumpkin side left side and the uh, orange side right side. So bottom's on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and put the blending block in. Pumpkin over here, orange over there. And uh, we're gonna reheat our cups and get ready to make some more worms. All right, let's go back in for more. So again, <clears throat> pumpkin side, left side, orange side on our right. So this should work out. Let's find out. So we're gonna draw up, nice even, okay. Oh, that one went straight in. Okay, now we're just gonna push down on the injector real slow. This is a thick worm, so it does draw in a lot of plastic. So what you're gonna wanna do is hold pressure. I didn't actually hold enough on the first one, but I got away with it. All the baits fill down just fine. But you definitely wanna hold some pressure and you will need to uh, keep that uh, sprue hole right there topped off on the port, okay? And again, shooting at a lower temperature will help with that. The lower temperature your plastic is when you shoot a mold that draws in a lot, the less it, it's gonna draw in because that plastic has less cooling to do, if that makes any sense, okay? So again, that right there is really all you need to do. And uh, yeah, that's the magic trick. The mold that makes two different worms. Two different baits today, two different types of drum roll. The first one was a double stroke. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This one's a single stroke. Okay, here we go. Mm. Looky, 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 and boom. Now they are flat bottoms. Look at that. Come on, focus, baby. There we go. Yeah. So now these are shaped a little more like a, uh, a finesse worm that you're used to seeing. Look at that. Again, the top side was the uh, pumpkin side and our flat bottom. I did in the orange. This is a really great color for your creature baits as well, since it's very, very crawfishy. If that's even a word. Hey, how's it going? Waving to the neighbors. Anyway, how about it? And we have more plastic left, so we're not done. Okay, so on that last um, round there, I actually went ahead and shot my more normal finesse worm. Okay, so that's more what you're normally used to seeing a, uh, a finesse style worm shaped like. And that's, that's a traditional size. They're the same length. This one's just obviously, you know, your, your normal thin finesse worm. So. I made a few of those just to show you a, uh, a comparison, really, of size and shape. Okay, so let's get the, uh, the big ones out. Again, I made the flat bottom version of this one. All right. So, 
there is your size comparison. So this is a normal size, and then here's that new big old fat daddy, the mid mag. Yeah, look at that. Juicy, juicy, juicy. So yeah, looking good. Looking good, looking good. There are, eh, let me try to get them like straightened out here. Separated, well. Either way, you kind of get it. There's the uh, there's the size difference. So it truly is a magnum finesse worm. Same length, just a lot bigger girth on it. Good looking worms. And of course, like most videos, we are utilizing cold water today to help cure our baits. You'll hear me commonly refer to that as the bath, putting the baits in the bath. That's all it is. It's just some cold water to kickstart the cure process. After that, I will lay them out flat um, to cure. Um, you'll want to let your baits cure for about 24 to 48 hours. If it's a really thick bait, like, uh, like one of these swim baits or something, you know, let that bad boy sit for a couple of days or hang for a couple of days. But, uh, you know, worms like this, even the thick ones, let them cure up for a day. That's all the bath does, just a kickstart on the cure process. And just for reference, um, my little skinny finesse worm here, um, I get a lot of questions about um, where to get a finesse worm. Um, that one right there is the Bass Tackle Flat Worm, I believe it's called. Um, this might now be over at Bob's Tackle Shack, BTS. So check either Bass Tackle or BTS, and I believe it's called a flat, a flat worm. Um, it's not a treat worm, it's not a diamond tail worm, I'm pretty sure it's a flat worm. Um, but there's a lot of great finesse worms out there, obviously the one we're looking at today, and, uh, and this one right here if you are uh, inclined for a more traditional size as well. Um, also, Josh makes that worm in a regular size, um, just like this one right here. So, um, lots of choices. Okay, so real quick, just want to kind of do a little experiment. Um, to just kind of show you what I think is one of the best advantages of such a um, thick worm is that it makes for a good Nico rig. So there's lots of space in that thick body to slide your nail weight, right? So we're just gonna do a nail weight in the top. And then we'll just kind of wacky rig this thing just real quick. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that kind of really lets you do that uh, easily without um, kind of messing up the, the top of, of the worm. So you can see this isn't the best way to show this because this isn't a very deep tank. But you can see how it kind of glides down that front side first. Oops. Yeah. Yeah kind of makes it go to the, you know, it makes the worm fall almost at an angle. You know, it kind of goes in the direction of the weight. So, yeah, Nico Rig is, is a bad boy. And um, a thick worm like that, I think really assists, um, you know, pull, pulling off stuff like that. You know, so, sort of like with a stick worm, you know, a, a regular stick worm is, is thick in the body. Um, that's just one thing that I like about these uh, thicker finesse worms there. So, yep, it's not really the right hook to use for it, but you get the picture. Okay, everybody, so here we have a few things laid out. There's the round version, and then there is the flat bottom version. Uh, over here we have some, oh, shaky camera, some more flat bottom versions. So, Yep, a really cool mold, a really good idea. It allows you to make two different styles of uh, finesse worm without having to buy two molds. Saves you a little bit of money, and uh, and it's actually really fun. Um, so, you know, a couple of these you can make. You can make a lot of stuff, and then here are little baby finesse worms. But uh, anyway, that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, a really cool idea kind of a way to give you more bang per your for your buck 
I think, is, is kind of the idea behind something like this. And it's just a great worm. This is one that he developed with Terry Scroggins. It's called the Mid Mag. It's a really, really cool bait. Um, and as you saw at the beginning of the video, I'm sending a bunch of them out uh, to test the waters, so to speak. So with that said, I think we're going to wrap this one up, y'all. Okay, guys, that one's going to wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please shoot me some comments down below. Let me know which uh, style you like better, the, the uh, round finesse worm or the flat bottom finesse worm. Um, I've kind of always thrown flat bottom finesse worms. We all kind of grew up throwing the uh, zoom trick worm, as it were, or still is. Um, great worm, by the way. I like how thick they made it in the uh, head. Um, but yeah, let me know which ones you like. Let me know if you like the color. Um, I think it's a great color be really great in, um, in, like, in like a creature bait or as like a natural color for maybe like a jig trailer. But um, in any event, we're going to stop rambling. Thank you guys so much. Comments down below, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you later.